welcome back, Oscar. What a game we had in Valencia Atleti. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty good and competitive game, especially in the first half. You know, yeah, lots of controversy, man. And there was controversy, but besides the controversy, I thought the game was quite nice to watch. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's somewhat the new Valencia, right? Because we're accustomed to a Valencia where they just shut up shop on their border last. It's more defensive and destructive football in quotation marks. But I really like the look of Gattuso Valencia. Like they play really nice football. The interplay play is good. And but the problem is with this team is that they lack a goal threat. Like when you get to the final third, they're very yeah. nervous or they don't make the right decisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like I, I'm in the same boots too. Like I really like how Gattuso has changed the approach of Valencia from last season to this season where they had 71% of the ball, had lots of chances and good plays. It's just that the quality in the final third is lacking. Right? Yeah, because it's fair to say Valencia did dominate Atleti up until Atleti scored. Yeah. And um, But it's clear that they are missing a striker like Cavani. Do you think Cavani is the answer to Valencia's woes, or do you think they need more before the market closes? I feel Cavani can be the, it can be the answer if he stays fit. I also think they need something more on the wings too. So I'm hearing they're linked to Brian Hill. If they can get Hill back, I think that should be sufficient enough to create proper chances because what they have on the wings right now is a Castillo who didn't play too much for AC Milan yeah. and a um, Samuelino who is new to the league. And while, yeah. he's good, that while he has potential, it's probably going to take me a while to get up to speed. So, in yeah. their hands, the kind of the missed passes in the final third when they're about to get into good positions. Yeah, Lino was great, wasn't he? Like, he was very good against his former team. Mm-hmm. But a lot of things that took away from this game was the controversy with VAR in the first half because there was a, some strange decisions like the red card, uh, the goal that was chalked off for a foul. It was interesting wasn't it yeah it's like i thought that was a foul of felix at first so i was surprised yeah. when he didn't give it. so i'm like what did you see in real time that made you not give that foul like the fact they had to say you made this big of a mistake <laughs> is honestly it's not a good look man <laughs> no it's not especially when you look at the replays and he's like looking at it straight away i'm like he's looking at this straight on there's no obstruction i'm like what did yeah. you see do you think Felix just fell on his own? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because Choman gets a yellow card for a similar tackle that like he ignores. Yeah, um, true. I'm like, do, does he think the Akabi is intangible that Felix fell through him? <laughs> yeah. The, like, the red card, though, I, I sort of feel for him in the red card because I can see why he gives it because Morata is like... Going yeah, true, true, true. I, I can see that, honestly. Yeah. Like, the red card is like, it's not that big of a mistake from him, but the... The foul that wasn't given was kind of like you're one of you're supposedly one of the top referees in this league and you can't see that's a foul. That's sad. Yeah, yeah, but like given all Valencia's domination, the fact that they had a goal in the net, Atleti would be delighted with this result because Griezmann comes on, he scores again, and after the goal, they were the one who seemed more in control. They took advantage of Valencia leaving spaces mm-hmm. behind. You could have made it two or three at the end of the game. Yeah. Good, like, good away result for Cholo's side. And it's a good result, no matter how you look at it, because you're coming to Mestaya off the back of a very bad loss at home. And while, to be honest, up until they scored, the same problems they had against Villarreal were on display today, like yeah. the passive, the complete passive nature to pressing, to trying to work hard. And yeah. then when they got, when they tried to counter attack, it was only Marta and Felix. Like there was no, like if you look at Atleti in the first half and second half of all of their games this season, in second half, they play better because they commit more bodies forward in the sense that the changes they make are more attacking by nature. So yeah, and, and it's you should just start, him, yeah, too. you should just start that, start with that and see how it goes. Yeah, it's the lack of pressing too, because there are times in that game where 
Valencia had the freedom of Atleti's midfield up until they got to the final third. That's when it seems like Atleti were going to do something to counteract it. Yeah. Yeah. And on Griezmann, right, he gets the goal, but like, given what we discussed last week with mm-hmm. Barcelona and Atleti's situation, when do you think Atleti will be hurting themselves when they're starting Griezmann? Because it seems like he's on form at the moment. Mm-hmm. Given how hectic this season is going to be starting from next week, yeah, it's probably going to cause them sooner rather than later if they get injuries and yeah. such. And you have to consider the fact that some of the players are internationals and they're playing for the World Cup for a World Cup place and all these things. So yeah. Brisbane is going to have to start games at some point. Yeah, he's, he's going to. And there are rumors with Atleti on the line of the World Cup. We know Renan Lodi has gone to Nottingham Forest. There are also rumors that Carrasco might be going to Spurs. They might activate his release clause. Do you think it's plausible? And if he does go, how do you think that affects Atleti? Massively, because Carrasco, as Carrasco is a winger playing at wing back and has the he has, he's a very good winger and also has the work ethic to get back when needed. So that's a huge defense. That's a huge like part of their game they're going to give away if they sell him because there's not many wingers right now that match his skill set that are cheap. I can't even think of any wingers that match his skill set right now that are even expensive <laughs> that will be willing to go at this point. So yeah. I think letting them have their left wing back options be Region and Saul is it's a big mistake. It's yeah, but especially given how terrible Saul was today. I mean, it, it would just be lack of planning to let Lino go, Manuel Sanchez go, Lodi go, and Carrasco go in the same window. But then that Carrasco money, they can register a certain one to waste star. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't think. I, I don't think that's possible, but I, I feel the theme of like on the performing teams will be somewhat of a theme this week because we're going to move on to Sevilla and <laughs> oh my God. And I really enjoyed this game. I felt as a regional derby, it had everything. It had the spice. It had yeah. things to go for it. Sevilla, they started really well, but in the second half, it was a monologue from Almeria. It wasn't there. Yeah. yeah, it was. Sevilla were pretty good up until when they conceded. And once they conceded, they had no answer anymore. Like they had no, like the domination they had in the first half went down by like three quarters in the second half. And Maria woke up, like you say, it was like a proper derby where the like derby plus David versus Goliath situation, you know, Sadiq and Ramazani, you know, they're looking like a dangerous partnership if Sadiq stays. And I also thought, Akemia on the left side where Maria was very, very good. Oh, Sevilla, awesome. yeah, Sevilla couldn't get any drag down that side at all. Yeah, and, did you see the Navas situation where like he totally like bullies him? And I feel that's like uh, that was, kind of, yeah, that was kind of sad. That, to, game. that, was, that was kind of sad to watch. Yeah, because like that that just shows like how in the second half they were they just look physically better, much mm-hmm. faster, much quicker. Like if you had told me that. Sevilla was the team that was recently promoted and Maria was the team that's like been in the Champions League for four or three consecutive seasons, I would believe you without watching La Liga. And that's how it felt like. Yeah. It's like Sevilla right now, there's they, they don't have any ideas beyond crossing the ball and hoping. And right now, the quality of crosses when Navas and Cunha are in there are just bad. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's not and, looking good at all. And you also don't, don't read your fours, too, as well, because, like, Rafa Mir had that one chance, or there was that one cross from Papu to Rafa Mir, that if he gets it, it's 2-0. A goal. And, but instead, he gets a yellow card. Yeah. <laughs> That's Rafa Mir and NSC. In you For you, in a nutshell, these days, Dave. I mean, their strike has a potential, but then right now it's as if both, both of them have picked the worst time to just be on terrible form same with literally everyone in the squad right now yeah it, it's and how much of a blame do you put on up because it's one point from nine 
from out of nine. They played Osasuna via the lead and Almeria, which you would expect Sevilla to get all nine points from that. Also, he has just three wins in the last 15 games in La Liga. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I blame him for is the same thing I've been a critic of of throughout this time in Sevilla, like the lack of ideas beyond cross, cross and pre essentially. <laughs> Because with the profile of football as you have, you should be able to do more than that. Now, that's where I blame him. But then I've always criticized him for that. You know, it's like it's not like he's anything new. Yeah. What hasn't helped him is, you know, the fact that they've gone from having two the arguably the best center out pairing in Europe to playing red kick every day. So yeah, and, I mean yeah. that that drop off is is like a cliff or a True. Whatever you want to call it, so yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah. Spread top in glory in either of the two goals either. Like he was at fault, I believe, for the first one. The second one, he doesn't do a great job tracking Sadiq. So mm-hmm. yeah, like he's. I, I feel Munchi has sort of had a disaster class in this window, in that I feel there have been good players on the market, cheap players on the market to cover the loss of Carlos and Kunde, especially mm-hmm. when you know since January that you're going to need to cover them because yeah. They could have gotten Kalki. They could have gotten someone like Romagnoli, Kalki from Amaria Romagnoli, who mm-hmm. Bremer from Torino. Yeah. I thought they were going, I thought they were actually going to go for him because he looks like a good player, but they didn't go for him at all. Because yeah. like he knew the problems in the squad, like everyone could see it. Like mm-hmm. obviously they're gonna lose two center backs, so they need to replace them. They need a replacement for Fernando in the midfield, they need more Pam. More like mm-hmm. Zam Zam, like <laughs> I yeah. I get what I'm saying. More pace and power and stuff like that. And <laughs> up front, they need a proper striker. And yeah, they have, they have been really good strikers on the market, to be honest. Like Sadiq, who scored the goal, um, Sevilla could have gone from, or they yeah. could still go from before the market closes. Like, yeah. as a the team, the team with Sadiq is that Sadiq. Sadiq is sometimes really good and really bad, like a nursery. So yeah. <laughs> I don't really think. Another potentially clumsy forward is the answer. Sure, sure. Yeah, they're, they're both very clumsy. But but for Sevilla, though, I feel, I don't know, does Lopetegui last? Because I look at the fixtures from now to November, and they have some really tough fixtures. Yeah. The only two that I can say that, okay, this is a guaranteed win for them. Because I'm not sure how well they do in the group. They have Barcelona coming up, then they have Man City. Wow. Honestly, I mean the fact that Lop- that um, Monchi has to go and tell the fans to like Lopetegui isn't going anywhere and stuff is already not a good sign. That usually means the writings on the wall. <laughs> you know, many yeah. many take it take it to quote from the Bible like yeah. Lopez. Um, I mean it has to be a miraculous next few days. Yeah. And to get unexpected points and everything. But you know what? I'll tell you something. I feel Sevilla might have a better group stage than we're all thinking. Like, they, I feel that their league form is going to drop badly, but we'll be in a situation where they might be 13th and second in their group. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it, it, is, it is very possible. But a, t- a team that also has a toughish group, but is on fire right now, is Barcelona. Kunde finally got registered. The Thank atmosphere God. at the company was amazing. It's like it felt like the Barca of old when Messi, Suarez, and n- not in terms of the players, but like in terms of the atmosphere when, when Messi, Suarez, and Neymar are still there and the fans mm-hmm. were like singing every. It, it was it was impressive because last season it was like a funeral every game Barcelona played. I, I can't. Uh, and I imagine that this time last season. We were struggling to get 20 something fans into the stadium, and now we have 83 against a newly promoted team at home. Well, how times have changed. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, what, it's, what, it's what spending a lot of money in the transfer market does for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and when you get bringing a player like Lewandowski, who scored like two really good striker goals, the first one was the sort of crosses that like Barca were making last season, and there was no one there, and you complained throughout last season that it was not making those runs. It runs. Because those are the runs that get you 15 goals a season. And 
lots of important points. And the second one is magnificent. Yeah, the second one I put my hand on my head. I was like, wow. Yeah. This is this gave me Suarez vibes. Yeah, and and that's that's the sort of striker like you bring in that I feel you need a team like Barcelona needs to do all in a very difficult group that they yeah. have and to do all in La Liga as well. And it seems like Lewandowski, like he's he and Benzema, who we're gonna talk about soon, they're gonna be fighting it off with the Chichi to the end of the season. Yeah. It seems like we're going to it's going to be back to 2010 when you had Messi Ronaldo <laughs> fighting. Now you have two B Tech versions of them that are in the 30s. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to look forward to as a Barcelona fan, as a Real Madrid fan too, and as a neutral of the league, like to see how everything plays out. Hopefully, we can continue to play games like we did on Sunday, and yeah. hopefully at Opponents set up as bad as River <laughs> did, did because my 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 the, the defense is like Barca, they, it was a monologue this game too like Barca had complete control up until four zero yeah I mean up until three but then they made some subs at three zero they should they took tough fights but then it was like a fly that comes and you just swat it away yeah yeah so I mean the the fact that the thing is that. I don't even know what Pacheta was trying to do, but it just didn't work at all. I feel like a game like this, where you need to physically like trouble Barcelona, you should have played Rocky Mesa, but he didn't play. So that was weird for me. He should have also played Sergio Leon, because when he came on, he he did really well. He was running the channels. And another guy that I really liked, Oscar Plano should have played. Yeah, because he's a grifter, Oscar Pano, yeah. and I loved Aurelio when he came on. He gave Barcelona lots of problems. Yeah, he gave us a couple of problems when he came on. Yeah. I said Julian was all right when he came on. It's just that anyone can look like a god compared to what Sergio Guardiola was doing in the first half. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'll but, go back to Barcelona a bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, because there are two, two names on top. Bakune, who played, he started as right back. But do you think Barca is missing something without the Kunde Araujo pair? I'll tell you something that's going to piss off a lot of Barcelona fans. Yeah, that is right. not the optimal pair we can play at the back. Wow. It's, it's far from it. Defensively and recovery pace wise, it looks like a dream for FIFA players. But I think, at least against games where we're going to dominate a lot, I don't think that's the best pairing. But what about games where, like, in the Champions League or against one of the top teams in Spain? Yeah, in those games, like... yeah, play both of them, but one of them at right back. Yeah. Yeah. And the other player on top of Mr. Sergeant, who made some really good saves, like, do you yeah. think he's getting back to his best? Yeah, it, it, it's, it felt like since Xavi came to Stegen, had been slowly getting back to his best, but I'll say, like, Towards the end of last season, he became a not, he became like a decent goalkeeper again, whereas before he was just average. But now he's looking and sounding like a goalkeeper that's really enjoying his football. Like what one thing that I really liked was when Kunde made that goal line clearance. How how psyched Stegen was to keep the clean sheet. I'm like that's the kind of passion I want to see. Yeah, I really I really enjoyed that too. But speaking of great goalkeepers, Thibaut Courtois, wow. Well, like when the in the Espanol Real Madrid game, like when Espanol was dominating, he made some key saves. Yeah, like always. Like you know something about this game. Yeah. As one when I tweeted, Espanol are dominating right now, so Real Madrid are going to win three one. <laughs> and guess what happened? Yeah, I think I'm so used to Real Madrid doing this that I added. An extra goal for more measure. I'm like, <laughs> not only will they score ridiculously late goal, they will take the piss. Yeah. And they... <laughs> yeah. I... But if you're Real Madrid fans listening, they might be pissed because they were like, we really dominated the first half. The first half was all us. And fair play to them. Like, they had a very good first half. Chormini with. Yeah, they had a good uh, first half. Yeah, Chormini was really, really good in, in, like, in getting to Espanol's half and like dictating. I feel. In that sense, he's better than Casemiro, but he has to learn to do the dirty work that Casemiro would do. Otherwise, I feel that first goal wouldn't have happened. Yeah. But also, I feel 
maybe it's a collective responsibility to defend the season rather than yeah. just one defensive midfielder. True. Yeah. He, it seems like he and Kroos are sharing those responsibilities. When Kroos goes forward, he stays. When he stays, when he goes forward, Kroos stays. Yeah. I feel like that's a good way to, like, get him used to playing for him because he's always been playing in a, in a double pivot, right? Yeah. But playing a single pivot is a different thing. So having Kroos kind of make it pseudo double pivot with him will kind of help him. Yeah, it will. But Lewandowski scored two goals earlier on Sunday. Benzema to respond, didn't he? With one goal and one fake goal. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's, that's that one annoyed me because yeah. <laughs> Espanol, you have another sub, just bring on your second goalkeeper instead of <laughs> but, but for, like in both in both goals, I sort of blame the comps because I feel yes, Benzema makes a good finish and he's he's a wonderful player. And I it'll be interesting to see who wins that battle between him, him and Lewandowski, but with Lecomte, I feel you shouldn't have been beating that easily in his near post for that second goal. I don't know. For me, I felt the quality of the ball that Rodrigo put in and the way Benzema made that run, I didn't feel there was much that Lecomte could do because mm-hmm. the ball was placed in a perfect position where if you touch it, it's going in, whether you're a defender or an attacker. So I didn't really blame Lecomte for that one. For the penalty, I'm oh, sorry, for the red card, I'm like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know something funny. I, I messaged a Real Madrid fan after Benzema scored. I'm like, I feel the pressure of Lewandowski scoring two goals earlier got to him because I feel Benzema of last season when he knew like the PQQ was sewn up, it would have given it to Alaba or Cruz. <laughs> but just like I'm taking this one, man. I have to score two goals. So I don't yeah. fall back in the PQQ race. Yeah, and then Real Madrid players are just celebrating that goal so much. I'm like, wow. <laughs> They really want, they're really into his Pichichi racing too, huh? Yeah, yeah but it, it seems when Tony Cross was asked about it uh, after the game, it seemed like he didn't care, but the rest of the players... He, they all care at this point, even personal players, I'm sure they, it's, part, it's part of what makes the rivalry more interesting. Yeah, and another player to highlight is Kamavinga. He had a really good game. Yeah. Yeah, Kamavinga. Uh, I saw his stat, right? In the 13 games where Kamavinga and Rodrigo have both come on together, Real Madrid have won 12 of them. Wow. There's the caveat. The 13th one was a loss, but technically a win. It was the second leg against Chelsea. I see. Oh. Yes, they lost. Yes, so they won all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's the key. That's the key then against Real Madrid. Then. If Kamavinga and Rodrigo comes on, just know you're going to lose this game. <laughs> yeah, so pray. I have to pray for a class for that Rodrigo starts at least, <laughs> or he's injured. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, injured, but you know, starts. Yeah, Betis fans are possibly praying for the same because that's Real Madrid's next uh, match. They're playing Betis, who both of both teams are the only team still with hundred percent record, and Betis in this game, Borja Iglesias. Wow, he's having this great start. Yeah, it's like the panda is out for blood. <laughs> Yeah, it, it seems like it's it's his Espanol form. This is the bar I remember from Espanol, who was very mm-hmm. good. And I was like, this striker is worth 30 million. And he's yeah. proved it ever since Pellegrini came back. Yeah, since Pe- Pellegrini coming back really transformed Borja back into the striker that we saw at Espanol because under Ruby, this guy is making current and Nestor and Rafa really look good. <laughs> but yeah, right now Borja is really on form. Betis, the red card complicated things against us as soon as, but we have to remember that Canales just came back, so these guys can get even better. Yeah, they can. And I loved after the red card, the way the fans reacted to it, the way Betis reacted to it. Like, Betis are a team that I usually think they're very soft, they can see goals very easily, but mm. they held on, they mm. did very valiantly, and it yeah. was nice to see. That soft center has actually gone under Pellegrini because. For last season, especially, I looked at Betis as a team that I'm like, they're really tough to beat now, especially yeah. with the performances that William Carvalho is showing. Yeah, he was really good. Do you think it's worth it to sell him to fix their um, salary cap issue? I mean, if they have to, they have to, because you can't leave players registered, but it will be a huge loss, in my opinion. Because he doesn't want to leave. No player really wants to leave Betis, which is, which is nice. It shows that the club are, is growing. 
Uh, yeah. Luis Enrique and Luis Felipe, the Brazilians, they've made their debut. What was your impression mm -hmm. of, on both of them? Uh, I think given the circumstances that Luis Felipe came in, came into with the red card every time, I thought he did well. Luis Enrique, I mean, I will see more of him because, like I said, his cameo got cut short by the red card. He had to do a lot of defending after. So we'll see more, more from him, hopefully in the next weeks. And let's go to a team that's having issues, Cadiz. The only team in the league with zero goals, zero points. What's going on? I don't know. It's like they're making signings now to try and address these things. Like they've signed two wingers in. I've forgotten the first one. Bo Bo they they signed Bra yeah, um, and Brian Ocampo, who I really like from Copa America, but. I don't know, there's just a complete apathy and lack of energy yeah. in their performances so far. It's like the quick counter-attacking and doggedness you used to see from them last season and you've seen before that is not just there right now. No, it and, wasn't. And they, they were the architects of their own downfall in this game, I felt, especially with the first goal. Yeah, like Athletic Club toyed, it was like a lion playing with the two mouse toy. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Athletic, Athletic were really, really good, but Cardiff were just so bad that it was kind of sad to watch. Yeah. And I hope, I hope they continue this for their next home game. Yeah, there, there are some strange decisions in this game as well. The penalty, I don't know how that's given as penalty when there's VAR, because I didn't see a handball from Espino. Yeah, me neither. And at least they didn't send him off for that for two reasons. Number one, if I have known for number two, he's in my FPL and his yellow card already made his back. <laughs> yeah, and he and Petzella really ruined my, yeah. my progress. But yeah, like I, I don't see the point of that penalty in all seriousness. True. And, and the offside goal as well, like I don't see how yeah, that was not offside at all. Like Give give my man sunset his goal. Like don't don't be making up rules on the spot. Yeah, yeah, and it's a shame that Iniaki went off injury, but Gurufeta might might be the Adoris size hole that they're missing. He might be the one to fill it because he scored two really good goals. Yeah, like he's a signing. I think he's he's returning to the club from SD Amorbieta, and he scored thirteen goals in Segunda last season and. Yeah, the two goals which are really well taken yeah. can give athletic fans hope that, hey, maybe this guy might grow into the striker that we need. Yeah, and I, I love the first one because the way he, like, takes a turn, he fakes like he's mm -hmm. going to, like, pass it or, or he looks for a pass and he's so quick in making yeah. him to shoot that Ledesma has no chance. And Ledesma, he had a, I feel he had a really good game despite yeah. the fact that they lost boys or Yeah. But Desma has been the only shining light so far this season and in this game. Besides maybe Ivan Alevo, who actually was the only player that looked like he was trying. Yeah. Everyone else was kind of like, you know, and then there's Lucas Perez, who obviously wants to go, and the fans are just booing him when he came on. So that doesn't really help. Uh, that, that was quite sad to see. And, and Bali, who's Mr. Reliable, he didn't have his best game. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to Athletics' neighbors, Real Sociedad. Isak has gone. He's left them for seventy million, which I feel is mind blowing given his stats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was completely mental. Yeah, but but he seemed to do okay without him, or they would have won this game with with him one zero. Without him, the one one zero. Bryce Mendes getting the goal. Um, what do you think is the way forward for Real Sociedad? Do you think it's um, Sadi coming in, or do you feel with Sora they're good enough to compete for top four? I feel if they get Sora back and they build their own team properly, like play to his strengths, I feel that might be enough because he's a decent play, he's a pretty good player, to be honest. Yeah, he's just that you they weren't really playing to his strengths, and then there were times where he was just trying to just fit to both of him and Isak on the pitch. At the same time, and that didn't do both of them much favors. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I e even in this game, though, yeah. yes, they played some really good stuff without Isaac, but 
Ramiro kind of built them out too. <laughs> yeah. And with Elche, do you feel it's a matter of time before the points finally come? Because three games without a win, one point. Yeah. Or... I mean, the point, the goals and points will eventually come because they, I mean, the red card automatically lost them that game against Betis. So let's forget all that. Yeah. Against Almeria, they played quite well, were, were denied by some great Fernando saves. And today, I mean, on Saturday, um, Ramiro really kept them at bay. So given that they played against two really good teams in the first three games, I feel like the goals and points will start coming soon. Yeah, and Hetafe, they're also another team. They got their first points. Uh, they're still struggling, but I, I would say they've had a pretty tough start because you get Hetafe, I'm sorry, you get Atletico, you get Girona away and um, Villarreal at home. Not the greatest start, but they, they had the raw materials to finally grind out a point and they it wasn't the most pretty performance that we saw, but it was a performance that they needed. Yeah, exactly. It was needed to get that clean sheet. That first point, so their first point and first goal came way earlier than last season, so that's yeah. a that's an improvement already. Yeah, and it's all yeah. Gaston and Soria had a really good game for them. Exactly. Soria especially. Because I think against Atleti, a couple of the goals, I felt like it was beating too easily. But against them, Villarreal, he really did well to deny them opportunity, the opportunity to score. And yeah, um, that, lead, that means that Hetafe now have something to build on. Yeah. And with Villarreal, like, should we, is this a sign that maybe what happened last season is going to happen again to them? Or do you think this is just a team defending wall and a goalkeeper having a great game? Yeah, I feel it's more the latter. Mm. I also feel like since Villarreal have played so many more games than other people, like, we may have we may have to consider that they might have been a little bit tired. Uh, yeah, mm. and the fact that they're going to play away from home up until December, and then yeah, that, even their home games are away from home because it's going to be played in the Citat de Valencia, but that's mm. that's something to consider. Yeah, it's going, there's a, like I said, this season is really, really red for yeah. a multitude of reasons. Yeah, it is. And, and now let's talk about the good VAR decision in this game because there was a penalty decision. It, it looked to me in lifetime that it was a penalty, but VAR corrected it. Yeah. And, you know, VAR has been very good this week. Yeah, VAR is really good because that's on first, on like live watch, it looked like a handball, but then when you look at it in slow motion, it hits. Iron Bar in the face, so well done, Var. Yeah, well done for them. And moving on to Rayo Mallorca. This was Rayo missing AC Maru Marucci. He's such an impact player, man. Yeah, second week, second diving header, you know, assist for Kangin, who I feel has started the season really strongly, and this might be his year. Actually. Yeah, he also, he, also scored, he also scored in this game, and Kangin is a player I always think is like, somewhat like there's something there but you're just it's just missing that extra spark and maybe like you said this might be easier mm -hmm. yeah so if he and Mariki can work well together I believe that will really do Mariki good because at the back it seems Mariki are really really good because they've only considered penalties this season and even in preseason true so that it seems like, and the signing of Copete is looking like a very successful one so far. So yeah, um, Javier Aguirre's team look, and I mean they'll be happy with the points against a fellow bottom half team. Yeah. I mean the three points against a fellow bottom half team. Yeah, like like for Raya, I feel like despite the fact they got that point at the Camp Nou, this feels more important than that point. Like if you're Raya, mm -hmm. you would rather win against Mallorca than tie up Camp Nou against Barcelona. Because, then they should do that. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like, at the end of the season, if both of them are tied on 36 points, it's games like this that will count them out. Exactly. So save energy for those games instead of tormenting us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I still don't think Rayo will be in as much danger as Mallorca will be in. Yeah. Barring, like, a big disaster. But we'll see. The season's still pretty long. 
Yeah, Susan is still long in. Finally, let's move to Celta Vigo versus Girona. I believe this game started the weekend. So, um, Aspas, what can, more can we say about him? He's, he's always him. <laughs> if it's not him, who else is it going to be? It could be Paciencia this season. Yeah, but Paciencia looks like Paciencia has made an impact in the first two games he's played. So, that seems like a good option. Another good option that they had was Carlos Perez, who started along Aspas on Friday, and I thought he had a good game too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good that Celta got their first win of the season. Season. And with Beltran, I want to talk about him because last season it seemed like he was playing a more defensive midfield position, but this season he's occupying more or less the Dennis role, and it seems to be working for him. Yeah. I feel like Caldet is Caldet during the game against the first game against Espanol, he took off Oscar. I think it was and put Tapia back in, and what I, he was pretty happy with what he saw because Celta absolutely dominated Espanol until mistakes and Mingueza stopped them. <laughs> but that. yeah, I it's like. like it's like this new like idea now with with both Beltran and Tapia is the way forward for him. Yeah, and with um, and last season we also talked about how well they did in Real Madrid. They lost deservedly so, but it doesn't mean they were bad all game. Real Madrid were super yeah, bad. exactly. So yeah, Celta haven't had a bad game per se so far this season. They just have maybe one bad result, so yeah. they still look like a team that uh, like a dark horse for maybe conference league if they can keep Aspas fit and. Paciencia and everyone else, the new signings they've made can really job. Yeah, like like so far, I think it's started the season. I don't change it, but season has started well. It's been a lot of games have been very interesting. Maybe the most mm-hmm. boring one is was Setafe the area, but to have like just two zero zeros and three match days is incredible. I think it's three zero zeros, right? Three? Oh. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's one more zero zero. Yeah, I think three. You're you're right. So that's mm-hmm. not too bad considering the amount of zero zeros we got last season. But let, let's move on to the Champions League and let's start off with the Spanish teams. We're gonna start with a group of death because that's Barcelona, Inter Milan, Bayern Munich, and a sad Victoria Pilsen. How are Barcelona gonna get out of this one? This draw is fixed, man. <laughs> <laughs> there is there, okay. Uh, there's definitely varianting for later, but yeah, to get out of this group, we need to score goals because I'm say I know it's obvious, but last season we only scored two goals in the group stage. Clearly, we need to work on that, yeah. and hopefully with Lewandowski and good squad management, because our October run in particular is really tough. We're facing yeah. Inter twice, Bayern. For the second time, we'll be facing Valencia, <laughs> Athletic Club, Real Madrid. So wow. yeah, we, we got and Victoria Pilsen. So let's not count them out. They might be dangerous. So, yeah. so yeah, we, we need really need to make sure at the very least we beat Inter. Yeah. And we don't lose to Inter. Yeah. Because I be- feel that, yeah, because go on. Because I feel that that game, and it's it's interesting that it's third and fourth game will be the key to the tie. Because also Inter, they haven't they started they haven't really started really well when they've been tested. Because Lazio on Friday really toyed with them. So maybe if Barcelona are in their best form, that's those are the games that will matter. Yeah, and then you know what we get from Bayern, we get from Bayern. Yes, Bayern are kind of weaker than last season in some sense, but that means they're also a new team and there's new um, ways for them to grow. So we'll see, hopefully we can try and, I hope, I mean, my realistic expectation is second, but if we can somehow cinch first, then that would be great. Okay, good. Yeah, let's move on to Sevilla's group. So it's Man City, Borussia Dortmund, and I believe Copenhagen. Yeah. Um, so you said that Sevilla have a chance for second earlier when we're speaking about them. With yeah, Man City, I worry for them because Holland just got his first hat trick in the Premier League, and <laughs> <laughs> the last time Holland faced Sevilla wasn't a nice watch for them. So, how do you see this going for them? Why do you think they're going to get second? Well, I didn't say I think they're going to get second. I was just giving a 
I try to paint a positive picture in a dark situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the potential like, if they can get their act together, I believe they can beat Dortmund at least once because Dortmund themselves are Dortmund. So yeah. But to can I tell, can I be honest? I feel Copenhagen will somehow take second <laughs> because Sevilla wow. and Dortmund are so 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 like so so right now. Um, they can be really bad. So it's possible that Copenhagen, you know, Copenhagen, we shouldn't write them off as the yeah. team that everyone will get points off. True, true. And they have Matty Ryan, who we know very well from Spanish football. Yeah. And also, like, I'll say from Sevilla's perspective, the good thing is, like, they play Dortmund, same way with Barcelona, they play Inter in the third or fourth game. They play Dortmund in the third or fourth game. So that would be crucial. If they're back on form by then, you never know what form Dortmund would be, but if both teams are on form, those are the two really interesting games to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like for Barcelona and Sevilla, given that Bayern like a big favorite to get first, I feel like Bayern doing us a favor and beating the other teams will be quite helpful. Same thing with Manchester City. Yeah, that's beating the other team. Yeah. That is very true. Let's go on to the Madrid side. They've been given a gift of a draw, if we're being honest. We start with Atleti. They have the rematch against Porto, the grudge match. Uh, they have late by Leverkusen, and I believe the last team is Club Brugge. Yeah, but they, they they're going to make it hard for us. For Obviously, us. they're, they're going to them. they're going to skip second on the last match. Day. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see them doing this. Uh, like, but the thing is, Porto. It doesn't seem they started the season that well. They lost on the weekend to Rio Ave. At Leverkusen, they got their first win of the season this weekend, so or last weekend. So it seems to be an easily up yeah. Atleti, but we yeah, know. but they have to face Jutku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jutku. Yeah, he's been he's been good. For yeah, yeah. So that, that group will be interesting. Club Brugge managed to get the draw against the mighty Paris Saint Germain last season. So who yeah, knows what they have in stuff. And I believe they got a draw against Real Madrid in like uh, the last two, yeah, two, yeah. two seasons, three two seasons, three seasons, ago. seasons ago. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Real Madrid, they got tied with Shakhtar Donetsk for like the thousandth time. So uh, I'm very, very in quotation marks interested in that game. But they also have Celtic <laughs> and Leipzig too. Wow. Wow. Very tough <laughs> games. I'm so <laughs> jealous of Real Madrid's fixtures. <laughs> My God, this looks like a Europa League group. Uh, so they sh- there's an any drama about who's going to finish top in this group. If we're being honest, mm-hmm. or if we're Celtic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're playing they're playing Celtic in the first game. So, but do you think Celtic can finish second? I think Leipzig will finish second. Yeah. Oh, nice. I, I, unless unless they do it, I feel Leipzig have been a really interesting team in the last few tournaments. It's just that like last season they got both Man State and PSG in the same group. That's ultimately bad luck. So yeah. hopefully for them they can make they they'll definitely expect they should finish second in this group. Sure they, they will and um speaking of easy groups Spurs also got a very that's the group I wanted Eintracht who haven't started well they also have Sporting, who haven't started well. Marseille, they've started very well in French League. Mm-hmm. Is it yeah. also a back for Spurs? Like, it's well, we have to see because there are two teams: it's Spurs and it's Conte. So yeah. you never, we don't like you know, Tottenham have had a group like this in 16, 17, I believe, where they had Monaco, they also had Bayern Leverkusen, and so on else, and. They finished third, so yeah, anything yeah. is possible, honestly. Yeah, never underestimate Antonio Conte in European football or overestimate him. <laughs> overestimate, yeah, overestimate. <laughs> yeah, but, but for me, I feel maybe like they go through along with Marseille. Yeah. It seems never overestimate Marseille in European football either. Yeah. Yeah, that's, true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, like this, this group was it, it's the group of life. It will be interesting for other reasons. Going yeah. on to the group of death that don't doesn't involve Spanish teams, I believe that's it's between the Liverpool group and the PSG group. Which one do you think is tougher? 
Uh, it depends on who you ask in the group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the Liverpool, yeah. one, I, I feel everyone is picking it up because like they're saying, oh, it's gonna they're gonna play Rangers, but like Liverpool proved it on the weekend when they put nine past four with that. We're back, and I'm not sure whether Rangers would have enough for them. I asked lost Anthony. Napoli, yes, they started well, but it's still a new team. They've lost a lot of the veterans in that. Yeah, sport. yeah. I think for those reasons, Group H is tougher. But then, like I said, it depends on who you're asking in Group H. True. And who do you think goes through in this group? H or A? Uh, a. We love a. Um, I believe that that 9 0 win should have banished any worries about Liverpool. So I think they'll go through with Napoli. Go through Napoli. Rangers yeah. will take, I think Rangers will get third. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that for sure. And let's go to Group H, and that's uh, PSG, Juve, Benfica, Maccabi Haifa. It's the Di Maria Derby, isn't it? <laughs> oh, true. Di Maria did for all three clubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Di Maria Derby. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's like I can see this scoreline PSG 1 0 1 UV. PSG with 34 shots, three penalty misses, courtesy of Mbappe, and UV with one Neymar on goal. With it. <laughs> yeah, but I think Benfica, sorry. Yes, yeah, and Juve should go through. With Juve, do you, do you fear something similar to what happens to Barcelona would happen? Because we're somewhat nah. unknown to Benfica. Because they nah, we, 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 last season, we had a terrible, we had terrible luck with injuries and everything. Like we used to play Benfica with teenagers on the wing. So yeah, that is if you, unless Juve have that sort of problem. Then I believe they should be able to do it with Benfica, who lost Darren Nunes as well. So they'll be weaker than last time. Yeah, they lost Darren Nunes, but they have started their season in Portugal really well. And in the group stages, um, or in the qualifiers, they looked really good. They scored goals for fun. Okay. But none of those teams are UV and PSG, no? Yeah, none of them. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, and, uh, let's let's see, but I do, I do believe that it will be between it will, the games between PSG and Juve will decide who goes through. But I think I just have to make sure they cash in on Maccabi Haifa or Maccabi Haifa make sure they cash in on Benfica. <laughs> that way, that relationship is going to work. True, true. And finally, the Chelsea group with Milan, Chelsea, Salzburg. Another group I wanted. <laughs> So is this one the simple street out between Milan and Chelsea for the top spot? I wouldn't underestimate Salzburg to be honest. Yeah. Even though they lost the even though they lost Ademi and I believe Sesco has joined Leipzig, right? Yeah, I believe Sesco is still in Salzburg, but he's going to go to Leipzig. Okay. So in that case, I think. I think Milan, we have, this Milan definitely have to try and make it out of this group because yeah. last season I gave them a pass because they were in it during the group of death for last season. Yeah. This season I'm like, you really should do better than finishing fourth. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And I'll say for Chelsea again, this is a bit, this is a gift of a group to be honest. Because actually, I feel like giving out Chelsea. Who seriously need a striker right now? How mixed they've started the season. I feel like this is completely up for grabs between the two of them. Yeah, but in terms of qualifying, it's because I can imagine, let's say Chelsea got replaced with Barcelona in in Group B, I believe. Yeah, e, I'm sorry, yeah. Group, C, group C, whatever group. It, it might have been they might have been in trouble to qualify, and it would have been a very nice story between <laughs> Chelsea and Inter because of Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> you see that that should be the storyline that this these <laughs> like bombs that you for was look is it is it like I honestly was surprised we got Bern because I thought we'd get PSG because yeah. of the messy team. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but I feel they're going for reunions this year. Like, how uh, I feel like they're saving that one for the round of 16. <laughs> yeah, Holland's going back to Dortmund. Dortmund. Di Maria's going back to Paris. Lewandowski is going back to Bavaria. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Inter are facing a Spanish team for the umpteenth time. <laughs> What's on that? Let's go for the umpteenth bloody time. Five, Same yeah. team. With... Hey, Real Madrid shocked there. <laughs> At least since Inter and Shakhtar are in the same pot, and I think there's no way two of them can be in the same group for the <laughs> third year running. <laughs> no, no. Like, oh, and then Gladbach could have tweeted, oh, you forgot to. Liverpool, fight. Napoli, and Ajax. Liverpool has been in the same group with these two. They try almost every year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. And they always get Porto. Yeah. One the other. <laughs> Atletico and Leverkusen, again, they've been in the same group at least once before. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost it's almost like you're actually giving, twice, twice, twice. Yeah, it's almost like you're you're giving you for reasons for scrapping the group stage, which they do in 2024, 2024. So, um, or 2024, 2025, like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just that it's all uh, good to scrap the group stage. Why is what they're doing any better? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's quickly talk about the Spanish teams in the other competitions. Uh, Betis, they got drawn with Roma in the Europa League. Mourinho's coming back to Spain. Do you think Betis should go through in their, in their group? I think Betis should win their group. Win? Oh, wow. That's, that's, those are big the, words. I'd say they're better than Roma. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. yeah I'll I mean, that. Roma have the baller, but yeah. still, I, I feel... And I know it was just a friendly, but they schooled Roma in the friendly last year. <laughs> okay, but minus Jack, Robert is, even whether they're stronger at Roma or not, they should aim to finish top in this group because it makes life easier for them if they want to progress deep into this competition. Yeah, because you get you get second, you get drawn against maybe um, Inter. I, I hope Barca. Inter. I, don't say right. So, even if, even if they can't get drift to draw with us, yeah. if we have to keep it up, but you know, they'll get drawn against Bayern, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ralph Sociedad, they, they like on the team of like teams getting repeated teams, Ralph Sociedad, they get to match the United States again. Again, no, uh, I mean, in the Champions League, the last time they were in the Champions they got my United, and yeah, is, is this going to be 4 0 for them? Like, I should hope. I mean, my United have added to their squad, but they don't move me. So, yeah. I, I, again, I feel if we also say that I've learned from their lesson and they don't play so naive against the team that just spams pace on the counter attack, then they should try to get positive results and maybe like that is aim for first because getting first seriously. Uncomplicate your life, but yeah, it's easier for. I'm honest, I don't know. I feel. I feel with our father and your father coming back, my United might be there for the taking, given how they can play. So, who knows? Yeah, yeah. and going to the Conference League, the Ariel, Lex Poznan, Austria, Van, and Hapoel Beersheba. This should be a layup for Villarreal. It's... They should, yeah, they, should, they should win. Honestly, I believe until maybe a strong European League team drops in. Yeah. And even between the teams that I think can possibly drop in, I feel Villarreal are probably favorites for this competition. Yeah, it, it must be them and West Ham to be favorites for the Conference League. No, no, I, no. I, I'd say Villarreal strictly because they won the Champions League semi final sure. last season. Yeah. It won't make sense for him not to go at least far in this one. Yeah, it wouldn't at all. But like the aim for Emery the season is the league. He's, that's what he's been saying. But yeah, I, I got what you're saying. And this this competition, they yeah. should... If they get top four and they don't win this, I don't believe anyone would complain. Yeah. But given like the fact that like they are possibly the strongest team in this competition, most likely the strongest team, they should make it to the final and they should win it. Yeah. I think it's still a cup competition, though you can just get unlucky. Yeah. But they luck, bad luck or good luck, I said, I believe they should get a semi-final without seriously compromising top four would be good. 
It will be. And yeah, that's all we have for this week, guys. Thanks again, Oscar, for jumping on, doing the podcast. Thanks for having me. As, as usual, man, uh, it's our podcast at this point. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, thanks everyone for listening. If there are any questions or you have any audio issues, feel free to message me. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Adios. Adios.